All right, in this video, we're gonna demonstrate how to set up a fluke scope meter on how to measure reflective wave voltage at the motor terminals. In this demo, uh, we're gonna be connecting to um, uh, the output of a, a VFD. So the first thing you wanna do, of course, is turn on the scope meter. And then what I like to do, because you never know how the scope meter was set up before, is I like to reset to factory defaults. To do that, you press user, press options, now scroll down using the up the down arrow key to factory default, and then press enter. It wants to make sure, are you sure you want to do this? Yes, we do. So now we have the scope at the factory default values. We can close that menu and go on to the next setup. The next thing you're going to do is set up for the voltage probe that you're using to measure the reflective wave voltage. The simple option is use the scope probe that comes with the fluke scope meter. This scope probe has a 10 to 1 attenuation. So it comes in a bag and it says it's 10 to 1 attenuation. So knowing that it's a 10 to 1 attenuation and we're going to connect it to channel A, we, we press channel A and we go to the scope probe attenuation and then we go over there and make sure it's set for 10 to 1 and then press enter. That's if you're going to use the fluke scope meter uh, voltage probes that are provided for it. In this demo we're going to use another option and this is a high voltage differential probe. This is battery operated voltage differential probe that we're going to use and we're going to connect it to channel A And you're going to note that this differential probe has two different attenuations, divide by 100 and divide by 1000. For this application, we're going to use an attenuation that's 1000 to 1. So again, in channel A, go into the probe attenuation, scroll over using the right arrow key to attenuation, and then using the down arrow key, select 1000 to 1. Okay. Now make sure that the input is on, your coupling is DC, your attenuation is 1,000 to 1. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to set the vertical sca scaling, the volts per division. In this test of reflective wave measurement, we know approximately that the peak voltage is going to be well over 1,000 volts. So our volts per division has to be set so when we get the waveform, it doesn't go off the screen. So we're going to increase the voltage per division. Right now it's set for 10. We're going to increase it to 500 volts per division. At 500 volts per division, we have a total window of 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 3,500 volts peak to peak, or about 1,700 volts peak. And then set your, the next thing we want to do is make sure our, our zero cross, our, where A is, is right in the middle. So we'll move that down to the middle of the screen. Well, we'll move it to one of the graticules that's flat. Okay, so now we have our attenuation set. We have our volts per division set. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to set our time set. In this demo, we're going to be looking at the output of the drive when it's running 60 hertz. A 60 hertz period is about 16 milliseconds. I like to start out with looking at approximately two cycles. That would be 32 milliseconds. There are uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 graticules over. So if I want to look at about 36 milliseconds of time across the whole screen, I need this set to about 4 milliseconds per division. Right now it's set for 10 milliseconds. I'm going to change my time setting to it says 4 milliseconds. Now it's set for 4 milliseconds. So now I have my voltage attenuation set. I have my times per division set. The next thing we're going to set up is some scope options. So press the scope button, press the waveform options, and I like to turn off glitch detect. So we turn, 
with the down arrow key, we turn it to off. Make sure you press enter. Now it's off. Normal acquisition, averaging is off, and it's on normal persistence. So that is all set up. The next thing we're going to do is set up our trigger. So you press the trigger button, and we're going to make sure we trigger on A, make sure the slope is positive, and then we're going to look at uh, trigger options. What we want to do is only trigger on edges. So we scroll down to on edges, press enter, and it gives us a new menu, and we want to update only on the trigger. So we down and then press enter. So now we have our trigger options all set, and we're ready to uh, start the drive to take some measurements. We close this out, close this out, and we'll leave it at the trigger menu right here because we'll adjust the trigger level uh, to get a clean waveform. So we'll start the drive. As you can see, we have the pulse width modulated waveform seen at the motor terminals. The next thing we want to do is increase our trigger level using the up button, up arrow key, to a level until at which it stops triggering. We know it's triggering because we keep getting an update in the waveform. When we stop getting an update in the waveform, we bring it down until we just begin getting an update. And then the next thing we want to do is we want to expand this waveform out. So we take the time button and then press the NS side. So we decrease our times per division. And the whole goal of capturing a reflective wave voltage is to see the rise time of the voltage and the peak value. So we keep on decreasing our horizontal scaling until we get a pulse which gives us the rise time and the peak value. And just to make sure we have the highest peak, press the up arrow trigger button until it stops triggering and then just lower it until we start getting traces updated. So there, so just increase it a little bit. And then what we want to do is stop it. We stopped it, it's on hold, and that is one reflective wave voltage with a rise time of approximately um, 200 nanoseconds and a peak value of 500, just over 1,000 volts. So there you go. That is how to set up a fluke scope meter to capture reflective wave voltage. Thank you.